Welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be going to explain you T mode and T con resistors of 8051. My dear students, in my previous video, I have already explained you how timer and counter is functioning inside 8051. To configure timer or counter, we need to configure T mode and T con resistors. You should know with 8051, we have two timers T0 and T1 both are having size of 16 bits both are up counter so with respect to clock it will count one by one and it will increment one by one here my dear students as if clock signal is given from 8051 then it will be working as a timer but as if externally we give clock signal to these timers then it will be working as a counter so here to configure timer and counter, we need to configure T mode and T con resistors. Let us see all those things step by step. So here, my dear students, 8051 that is having two 16 bits timers, T0 and T1, both are working as a up counter as I have explained. T0 and T1 that is getting further divided into eight bits of resistors. T0 is divided into TH0 and TL0, TH0 that is higher byte of T0 and TL0 that is lower byte of T0. Likewise, T1 is divided into two 8 bits resistors that is TH1 and TL1. TH1 holds higher byte of T1 and TL1 holds lower byte of T1. Here T0 and T1 that will be counting internal clock in that case you can say it is working as a timer. So when it is working as a timer, that internal clock pulses that will be provided by 8051. But when T0 and T1 that is counting external clock pulses, which is given on pin T0 T1, then you can say it is working as a counter. So here clock pulses is given externally on external pin of 8051 to have counter operation and for internal clock we will be working it as a timer operation. Here my dear students to have timer action you will have to configure T con and T mode resistors. So here I'll explain you first how T con resistor is there. See T con resistor that is bit addressable resistor. So you can address the single bit of T con resistor. If you want to address seventh bit you will have to write it as per T con dot seven if you want to address 0th bit of T con resistor, then you can address it as per T con dot 0. Here, my dear students, as you can see it over here, it is of 8 bits. So here, this T con resistor that is having data related timer overflow as well as external interrupt. I'll explain you how it is there. So let me explain you first how timer overflow is there. So you see TF1 and TF0, those are these bits you see. This is 7th bit and this is 5th bit of T con resistor. So that is indicating timer overflow. How timer overflow is happening? When this timers reaches to maximum value that is FFFF, it will roll back to 0000. At that time, it will be generating timer overflow. So when timer overflow happens, this bits will become 1. And when this bit becomes 1, at that time, 8051 is having interrupt inside. So it will jump program control to well-defined ISR location. At that time, 8051 will make these bits to 0. That is happening automatically. So my dear students, these bits are getting set to 1 when timer overflow happens. Timer overflow means when this timer reaches to FFFF and when it roll back to 000, at that time it will make this bit to 1. So for timer 0, TF0 is there, which is fifth bit of this TCON, and for timer 1, TF1 bit is there, that is seventh bit of this TCON resistor. Here, that bit will get clear to 0 automatically when there is ISR address which is there with 8051. So with timer 1, we have ISR address that is 001B and timer 0 is having ISR address that is 000B. So once interrupt is generated at that time, this bit will become 1. 
but when program control gets transferred to this ISR address at that time 8051 will make this bit to 0 right that is how this bits are there now I'll explain you TR1 and TR0 bits of TCON you see TR1 and TR0 that is available over here TR1 is there at 6th location and TR0 that is there at 4th location that is timer run control bit here this bits are used to start the counting of timer so when you set this bit at that time this timers will start count right it may be external clock it may be internal clock right but it will be starting its count when you make this bit to one so whenever you do programming at that time to start the timer you will have to set this bits for timer zero you will have to make this tcon dot four bit to one and for timer one you will have to make this bit tcon dot six bit that to one right so for that we should have basic idea about what are the instructions you will have to use set b then tcon dot six means it will make this timer one as a start counting timer right and for timer zero you will have to write set b tcon dot four that is this bit that will start counting timer zero and here when you clear this it will halt timer so to halt the timer you'll have to clear this bit so that is how timer will get started and timer will get terminated here now there are four bits which is there regarding interrupt so i1 and i0 those are their related external interrupt we have int0 and int1 those two external interrupt with 8051 that is been there with respect to this bits only so as if interrupt is generated this bit will become 1 right when 8051 receives interrupt on this pins then this bits will become 1 and it will get cleared to 0 whenever ISR is getting executed so for example INT1 is receiving interrupt so what will happen IE1 that will become 1 and as IE1 become 1 8051 will come to know okay there is interrupt so it will jump program control to ISR address when it jumps to ISR address at that time it will clear that bit right so here for INT1 ISR address is 0013 hex and for INT0 ISR address is 0003 hex that is how these two bits are there and two more bits are there that is IT1 and IT0 these are the bits which is indicating external interrupt type so as if this is equals to 1 then you can say these two interrupts are negative age trigger interrupt and when it is 0 you can say that is level trigger interrupt so negative trigger interrupt means what here on this two terminal when signal goes from high to low at that transition interrupt will get generated that is because of it is negative weight trigger in that case this bit will be one but when this bit is zero at that time it will be level trigger at that time signal low that will indicate interrupt is there over here right now my dear students i'll explain you t mode resistor so t mode resistor is not bit addressable remember this and here t mode resistor explains you how we can configure timers or counter as well as in which mode timer will function so here timer 1 that is there with 4 bits and here timer 0 that is there with 4 bits here my dear students this ct bar that explains you whether the given timer is functioning as timer or counter c means what counter means in that case this bit should be 1 and t bar means what timer so in that case obviously this bit that should be 0 so when this is 1 at that time it will be counter and when this is 0 at that time it will be timer here this gate terminal that we use it to enable control obviously remember this whenever you have gate bit at that time you will be initiating timer or counter with respect to external signal and obviously external signal that we will be giving it on 
INT0 or INT1. So when you use INT0 or INT1, at that time you will not be using this as another interrupt. It will be used as start timer signal, right? So when you want to start the timer by this external signal, then you will have to configure this gate. So as if it is equals to 1, you will be controlling this timer as hardware signal. Hardware means INT0 and INT1 that we will be using. For timer 1, you will be using INT1 and for timer 0, you will be using INT0. And as if it is equals to 0, then these timers are not depending on this INT signal means interrupt signal. Right. So when you want to initiate timer operation by external signal, then all you need to do is you will have to make this gate bit equals to 1. And this M0, M1, those are mode control bits. With this timers, we have in total four modes. As if it is 0, 0, timer mode 0 will be there. As if it is 0, 1, timer mode 1 will be there. As if it is 1, 0, timer mode 2 will be there. As if it is 1, 1, timer mode 3 will be there. How all these modes are there? For I will be making separate video. Here you just consider how we should be configuring this TCON and T-mode resistor. For that, my dear students, this TCON will explain to you how to start timer, right? And how external interrupts are there. And this TF0 and TF1, these bits are happening automatically. Here user is not controlling anything. And to configure in which mode it should be there and whether it is externally controlled or internally controlled, for that you'll have to use this T-mode resistor. In programming also, I'll explain you how to use this TCON and T-mode resistor. I think now it is clear to you how timer and counter is getting operated with TCON and T-mode resistor. Still, if any confusion is there, just post that in comment box. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.